Hello, third graders. Listen, as we're working through uh, Unit 10 here, right now I'm looking at Unit 10.9, that lesson 10.9, where we solve problems about liquid volume and mass. And as I looked at this particular lesson, it seemed to me this ought to be pretty simple for you to figure out. Mostly what it's about is determining totals of things. You either add something together or subtract something, add a number of things together, figure out from a total what might be missing. So I think this will be a pretty easy lesson for you. It's also the last lesson in Unit 10 before that Unit 10 uh, unit test comes up. So what I wanted to do, I just wanted to go over some of these problems with you. Another important thing to remember now, when you're working in units of measurement, remember we were talking about liters and grams and kilograms. When you answer a question related to a unit of measure, you've got to remember to label it properly. If you don't label it properly, then nobody knows what it really means. And that means the answer is wrong. So remember labeling. It's really important when you're using units of measure. We're on page 611. And when you get a chance to look at this video, just get out your books. Go to page 611. We're looking at the example number one there. You've got four beakers. And what they're saying in the problem is a restaurant serves iced tea from a great big container. And that great big container holds 24 liters. Now, Sadie will fill the container with the pictures of tea shown below. Will Sadie have tea left over after filling the containers? If you look at the three or the four containers there, first of all, if you've got 24 liters in the big container and you've got four pitchers that you're going to use to fill that container, then you would think that each one of those pitchers Oops, I'm sorry, I did that backwards. That's what happens when you know the answer in your head. It's going to have six liters in each one of those containers to fill up a 24, right? 6, 12, 18, 24. But if you look at those pictures, each one of them has seven, seven liters. So if you take the four containers and they each have seven liters, four times seven is 28. Now, The big container only holds 24. You've got 28. It only holds 24. So you take your 28, subtract the 24 that it can hold, and it's going to tell you that you're going to have 4 liters left over. That's kind of what all these problems in this unit are all about. It's looking at math problems that deal with volumes of liquids in mass and coming up with an answer. Down at the bottom, try this. It say use a bar model to solve. Rawls fish tank contains 32 liters of water. Okay, so there's 32 liters in his fish tank. He empties it with a bucket that holds four liters. So now he's got a bucket that holds four liters. So you've got 32 liters in the big tank. You've got a bucket that can take four of them out at a time. And it's saying, look at it this way. Now you know the whole tank is 32. So 
the bucket holds four, so you can think to yourself, okay, it's say be four plus four, that's eight, plus four is twelve, plus four is sixteen, plus four is twenty, plus four is twenty-four, plus four is twenty-eight, plus four is thirty-two. And then you can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It'll take eight four liter buckets to fill up the fish tank that holds 32 liters. Now, if you are really up and sharp on your multiplication, sorry, I got an itchy ear. If you're really up on your multiplications, you'd be able to go, well, four times what equals 32? Well, four times eight. Isn't that how many fours we came up with? Eight of them. So you see, you can solve it the long way, or if you really are practicing those multiplication tables, then it becomes really easy. And then you just make eight, eight blocks of four in that uh, little graph that you're building there. Let's go on to page 612. Now we're going to solve a problem about mass. What is mass? Mass is the weight of something, the density, and then it gives it weight. So Jeff has a glue stick, a glue stick and a 20 gram mass on one side of a balance. So he has a glue stick and a all right, here's our balance. And over here he's got a glue stick and a 20, 20 gram mass. Don't forget your labeling. 20 gram mass on one side of the balance and gram mass is on the other side. The pan balance is balanced. What is the mass of the glue stick? So, we got to figure out how much the glue stick weighs. So you place the glue stick and the 20 gram mass on one side of the balance and place gram masses on the other side until it's balanced. Now, we don't have a scale and gram masses that we can do that, but let's just say, for example, our glue stick weighs one gram. That means on this side, in order to make this balanced, we would have to have 21 grams because the glue stick plus the 20 grams equals 21. If you got 21 on this side, you need to have 21 on that side. Any more or less, and the scale will lean in the direction of the heaviest weight. Here's a problem. Try this. Use a bar model to solve it. So we've got a bar model here. And this bar model, I'll tell you, this new math is less math and more art. So far, that's what we got. And then all of that is over that. And it wants us to fill in the blanks. Here's the problem. A bag of peas has a mass of 432 grams. Always take the numbers. Don't worry so much about the words. We don't even care if it's peas. It could be carrots. It could be bananas. It could be boa constrictors. It don't matter. What's important in math is the numbers and what it's asking you to do with those numbers. So look, we got a bag of peas. The peas has a mass of 432 grams. We'll put that number here, and we'll put a little P here so we know that's the P's. A bag of carrots has a mass of 263 grams. So there's a C for the carrots and 263 grams. What's the total mass of both bags? What's the total mass? What's it asking you to do? You see, the last line of a word problem is always the thing that's asking you what to solve. It's telling you. What are you going to do? Well, 
It's asking for a total. When it's asking for a total, it's telling you to add them together. So let's do that. We've got 5, 6 and 3 is 9, 4 and 2 is 6. Don't forget the label. 695 grams. Okay, so that's our total. So in order to write that as a problem, it would be 432 plus 263 equals. Now it's a math sentence, an equation. We need to find an answer. So both bags have a total mass of 695 grams. Same thing on the next problem, and it's looking for kilograms. Looking for kilograms. So, again, we're going to use our little diagram here, and we're going to change this to kilograms. Forget the label. Ed's delivery service delivered three packages to Mr. Wilson. Okay, well, the only important thing to remember there is, okay, we're talking about three packages. So three is our number there. The packages have masses of 9, 12, and 15. So we've got three packages. 9 kilograms, 12 kilograms, and 15 kilograms. Oh, I'm sorry, not 15, it's 5. 9, 12, and 5 kilograms. What's the total mass of the three packages? Well, it's asking you the same thing again. What's the total? The total means adding them all together. So, 5, 7, 16, carry to 1, 26 kilograms. So, in this particular problem, we've got to add another, another block on our diagram here because we've got 9, 12, and 5. And we're going to add those together to give us the 26 we see on the bottom. Easy peasy, guys. I hope you all are practicing those multiplication tables because, you know, I can't stress enough how important it is to have those memorized because everything you will do in math from here on out will be so much easier if you know that. <clears throat> Page 613. Now I'm not going to do every one of these problems but let's just go through and do uh, a couple of them. Number two, write an equation and then solve the problem. Now what's an equation? Can anybody out there give me the definition of that vocabulary word in math equation? An equation is a mathematical sentence that has an equal sign. Equation, equal, see, you know, kind of the same thing. Equation. It means it's got to equal something. You've got a math problem and it's got to have an answer. So let's look. Ariel's recipe calls for 64 grams of apples. There's our first number. 64 label grams, and we're going to put a little A here, because that's apples. 86 grams of oranges. All right, so here's 86 grams, and we're going to put an O. That's oranges. How many more grams of oranges, how many more grams of oranges than apples does the recipe call for? So it's telling you this is a subtraction problem. How many more grams of oranges, which is 86? So now you're going to write your algebraic or your equation here. And it's going to look like this, 86 minus the 64 will equal 22. 
And don't forget in your answer, be sure and label it so that we know it's 22 grams and not 22 tons or 22 boa constrictors or 22 whatever. Label your answers correctly and your teacher will not take any points off. Let's go and do an odd number one. Number five on page 613. Here we got a character named Josh. What's Josh up to? He has six buckets of, for cleaning a restaurant. So he has six buckets. All right, we're just going to put a little B there. Six buckets. He fills each bucket. He's going to put four liters into each bucket. So each bucket is able to hold four liters. Why does this sound suspiciously like a problem we've already done? How many liters of water are in the buckets? <laughs> well, now, you know, sometimes the people who write these books, you know, they, they must go out to lunch every now and then because what it's asking is how many liters of water are in the buckets? Well, it's telling us that there's four liters of water in each bucket. What it should be asking you is what's the total amount of water in all the buckets? Jeez. I think I'm just going to write my own math book. Anyhow, this problem is going to look like this. And remember, it's an equation. Got to have an equal sign, so there's going to have to be an answer. <clears throat> so we've got four buckets, or I'm sorry, six buckets, and each one has four liters in it. And in order to find out how much that totals, it's going to be 6 times 4. Our answer will be 24 liters. 6 buckets, 4 liters in each bucket. 6 times 4 is 24. Or you could go and do 6 buckets, 4 6 times. I don't know about you, it's a lot easier to learn your multiplication tables than to have to do all this longhand addition and subtraction. But if you add those six fours together, it's going to give you the same answer, 24. All right, let's do one more on this page. Let's look at number six, because number six says think smarter. I know you guys are smart. So let's do this one. What we have are two pitchers, and in those pitchers, one has seven and one has five. I know that because I looked at the pictures. You got to look at the picture too. And you can see how much is in each one of those. So anyhow, Ellen will pour water into pitcher B until it has one more liter of water than pitcher A. How many liters of water will she pour into pitcher B? So this is pitcher A and this is pitcher B. And it's saying good old Ellen is going to continue to pour water into pitcher B until it has one more liter than what's in pitcher A. So, the first thing we need to know is how many liters will be in pitcher A if there's one more liter? So that would be seven plus one, right? Seven that are in it plus one more, so that means it's going to need eight liters. Now we know that Ellen, good old Ellen, she's got five liters and she wants to pour water into this pitcher 
until it gets to 8. So it's going to be 8, which is what she wants it to be, minus the 5 that she already has, equals 3. So if she puts three more liters into this bucket, she will have eight, and eight liters is one more than seven. Did that confuse you? No, I don't think so. You figured that one out right away. All right, let's go to the next page. <clears throat> I want to go right to, well, let's look at unlock the problem, you know? We've got A, B, C, and D. That means you got to think extra hard. Sorry, guys, that's just the way it is. Let's look at the problem. Ken's Cafe serves for root smoothies. Each smoothie has nine grams of fresh strawberries. So, we're talking about smoothies here. We got nine grams, a little S there, so we know those are the strawberries. <clears throat> How many grams of strawberries are in eight smoothies? It's telling that she wants to make eight. Each one has nine. Now, if you're right on top of your multiplication tables, eight times nine. What's eight times nine? Got nine ounces of strawberries. She needs to know how many strawberries for eight of those smoothies. Eight times nine. Well, it's 72. I hope you know that. But let's look at the problem. It says, what do you need to find? <clears throat> well, you need to find a total amount of strawberries that will go into eight smoothies. What operation will you use to find the answer? Well, the simple operation is multiplication. Eight times nine. Or you could say addition and go nine plus 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 nine and you'll still get the same answer. But multiplication is the right answer. <clears throat> it says draw a diagram to solve the problem. Draw a diagram. This is not art class, it's math class. All right, we know we're going to make eight smoothies. All right, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight smoothies. And each one of these is nine. We need nine ounces of strawberries in each one of these. So, eight times nine. So there are 72 smooth or yes, eight smoothies with nine grams of strawberries in each, since each smoothie is an I have no idea what that answer is. You can there are Eight smoothies with nine grams of strawberries in each, since each smoothie is an, I don't know, something group. You can, so basically what it's asking you to do is to multiply. You can go eight times nine equals 72. So that means there are 72, and don't forget to label, 72 grams. Now, what's left is the homework, and the homework is on page 615 and 616. And what I will do is see, number one has worked out for you already. Number seven, you know, everybody gets stumped on 
writing a problem that can be solved with a bar model that shows equal groups of leaders. When you got to create your own problem, it's like, duh, I don't know. I can't think. It's not that difficult. Write a problem that can be solved with a bar model. Here we go again, drawing more pictures. All right, here's the bar model. <clears throat> and what we have are... Oh, what is the measure? Unit of measure is liters. So our answer is going to be in liters. <clears throat> so that means this is a liquid measurement. So we've got six glasses of Kool-Aid that each hold six glasses and they each hold one fourth of a liter of Kool-Aid and our problem is going to be how much Kool-Aid will you need to fill six glasses. So, we've got six glasses of Kool-Aid, so let's break our chart into the six glasses. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six glasses, and each one holds one-fourth of a liter. I chose a fraction because I really wanted to I really wanted to make you think. It's a lot easier if it's a whole number. But fractions, you just add them all together, right? So by the way, that's the rule of a fraction. Addition, as long as the denominators are common, you just add them and put them over top of the denominator. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, and the denominator is four. And it leaves us with an improper fraction, six fourths. What do you do when you have an improper fraction? You gotta fix it. And you do it because a fraction, always remember this, a fraction is nothing more than another way of writing a division problem. Take your 6, divide it by 4. It goes in there one time. It gives you a remainder here of 2. Now, you can either go 1 and 2 fourths, or if you want, and you're really good at math, you can add a 0. Don't forget the decimal point. Bring your 0 down. Now, 4 goes into 20. How many times? Four times what equals 20? Five. So, is the decimal 1.5 equivalent to one and two-fourths? Why, yes it is. Because two-fourths is equivalent to one-half. One-half is equivalent to five-tenths. <clears throat> so, the answer to our problem would be Mom better make one and a half liters, don't forget the label, one and a half liters of Kool-Aid, and everybody will get a quarter liter in their glass. Wasn't that fun? You guys, that's it for today. That's lesson 10.9. Take a look at that unit 10 test. Uh, maybe we'll go over that tomorrow and pick out some of the problems on the test and work those out in front of you so you can see how to do it. Meanwhile, stay safe, stay happy, have fun, stay out of trouble. We'll catch you again soon.